Hello chaps, it's your favourite Chinaman here, and I am in Shengdong. I'm eating some some nice fried dogs and cats in a huge soup tureen. And I was scrolling through the British news site though, because someone said that the British news had uh, put forward a story on Azerbaijan versus Armenia, the, the war that's going on. So I thought I'd have a look at that and see what side the BBC is on uh, with their subtle bias. And I haven't been on their website for years, so I scrolled down and um, it's kind of stupid. Like this is obviously designed for mobile phones because I'm on, I've got a big computer screen and right now I can see six headlines on my entire screen. So that's just pathetic. Why does, why does every story need a fucking huge photograph? So I scroll down and I see this. And this right here is just bullshit. I'm an introvert. And meanwhile, it's a woman, which is red flag number one. Red flag number two is she's laughing and smiling and with her, like, her teeth are apart. She looks like she's going to bite someone's head off. That's how much she's laughing. And... I love it. I love it. I'm so quirky. I'm laughing. I'm doing an interview with the BBC. So it's like, it's insane. It's like, is the BBC trying to turn me into a schizo by having a headline that's completely contradicted by itself and by the photo? I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I don't think she's very good at being an introvert. She is very, very bad at being an introvert. If you want to be an introvert, stop loving it and being quirky and laughing, doing interviews while not being alone. That's not what it's about. Also, uh, leave introversion to, to the men. We do it much better. You're a woman. You can't do it. Um, and the next thing I see is four, three stories about relationships, and they're all fucking horrendous, psychotic stuff. And now, these stories are inter individually maybe interesting, and sure, the news is always going to be negative because... Um, good things tend to happen slowly, and bad things tend to happen quickly, especially in news. So it's kind of okay that they have these stories, but you think about the frequency of them, how many they have. This story, if you click through, is a woman who is scared that if her husband figures out where she and her daughters live, he will come and murder them. So they, they are paranoid about people even taking their photograph, or someone walking down, with this, uh, down the street videoing themselves, because they might get caught in the video and it might get uploaded to Instagram. And like these people are psychotic. Now, if you imagine that the husband was abusing his wife and beating her, you know, what kind of woman gets into a relationship with a man who beats her up? Probably the woman has issues. Probably the woman also is not a great person. And I'm not saying that to be mean, it's just true. Being a victim does not make you a good person. It doesn't make you a capable or wise person. In fact, it usually means that you're a bit of a psycho and a nasty piece of work yourself, usually. So this is like, look at this artwork as well. This artwork is not beautiful. This artwork is like a human face, but with weird white patches because they didn't color it in properly. And it just looks like it, the, the face is like jumping out at you from the background. The background is blurry and then the face is very razor sharp. This is like psychotic art. I don't like this. And the story's crazy as well about how this woman is intensely paranoid. Can you imagine having to put up with this woman in your life? Horrible. And then you have this. My pregnancy was as close to death as I'd ever been. So what is the BBC psychologically telling women or people in general about relationships? Oh, your boyfriend might murder you and you might die if you try to have children. Which is... I mean, it's true. This is a true story, presumably. But um, pregnancy is how we all started life. It's what creates life. Um, generally, it's not what kills people. It's what starts people alive. So this is a weird, horrible inversion of reality in general. And this, again, is like a weird edge case. Most, most people's dads are great. Most people's dads show them how to be strong. They protect their family. They are the breadwinner as well. So both of these stories are the flip side, the flip side of reality. And it's painting a very different picture, a very dark, paranoid picture for young women perhaps to, to see. And then you look at this story, why I ended up dating a man 20 years younger. So again, this is not teaching people to have sensible relationships where the women have children. If you click through on this, she's 48 years old. So it's actually possible for a 48-year-old woman to have children these days with medical science, but the children might come out retarded. 
uh, the chance of like uh, Down syndrome, I think, goes up exponentially at that age. So this again, and she should have a she should have a son who is twenty years younger than her. She should have a twenty eight year old son that she no she should have a twenty year old son or 24, 24 year old son that she had when she was 24. She should have a husband who is like 54, who is about the same generation her as her. Like, can you imagine if this is your mum? Like, she probably doesn't have any children. It's just a sad, sterile failure of relationships. Oh, and they, this is just the women, you know? I, I click at this and I think, oh great, it's another bullshit article. It's gonna be like this one with the fake introvert. Now this one's going to be, I altered my personality to fit in at work. And I was, I was saying, like, this photo is completely at odds with the headline. The headline is saying she is uh, suppressing her personality to be more, um, not to be more convenient for the people around her, to, to fall into line and behave in, an, in a way that's not annoying, uh, in a way that it, I can't think of the right word. But then the photo is completely different. Instead of the photo showing the out the the things around her as bright, everything around her is greyed out. Meanwhile, her dress is bright pink. She's got this ridiculous bullshit body language, completely fake body language. No one stands like this except to pose for a lying, dishonest, manipulative photograph. I don't like this at all. And I and um, so is this someone who altered their personality to fit in at work? Of course not. Why is she doing a narcissistic interview about with Google, portraying herself as a victim? Meanwhile, she's bright pink and everything around her is grey. If you're a person who is an introvert, or you're a person who alters your personality to fit in with your employer, you would be wearing dark colours, and the colours you'd be concerned about are everyone around you, your colleagues. So this is bullshit. This is another case where the photograph completely contradicts the article. And I thought this was going to be about women, being like, oh, I'm so quirky, I'm such a quirky individual. I click on it, and what do you know? It's not actually about women, it's about people with dark skin. It's about immigrants who are ungrateful and disloyal to British indigenous people, whining about how we're not giving them, well, not we, I mean, I'm Chinese, I'm in Shandong. But they're whining about how white British people dominate Britain. Because of course white British people dominate Britain. What would you expect? Who do you think dominates Israel? It's the Jews. Who do you think dominates China? It's me, Bing Shi Lao, and my grandchildren who are very high ranking in the Communist Party. But uh, my grandchildren. Oh look at this is really great. Working at blue chip firms. She never felt discriminated against. For more than 25 years, she never felt discriminated against, but after she left, she realized she'd been altering her personality to fit in. It's like, it's so garbage. So what is this? You know what this is? This part is reality, and this part is the ideology. You tell someone that they can believe they're a victim, and they can use that to gain power and status and uh, feel vindication, and what do they do? Well, eventually they believe it, because why wouldn't they? They like that. But the funny thing is, this ethnic whining, you can sort of understand it when the blacks do it, because the blacks are comparatively poor, their families are in chaos, they're, they're not doing well in school, or all the rest of it. But it's ridiculous when the Indians do it. I mean, this is a Sikh. The Sikhs are probably the wealthiest, most talented um, ethnicity in Britain, more so than the natives. More so than the white males, white men. White men is who you should say, not white males. Very disrespectful. If you're a white man and someone calls you a white male, they are literally dehumanizing you. This is dehumanizing. I mean, they say that all the time. Oh, yeah, being dehumanizing. What do you think this is about? Why do you think they say male instead of man? It's because they don't like to say man because it makes you sound strong. That's what man sounds. It sounds strong. It sounds decisive. Male. It's like a... It's how you would describe a an animal. But the, the hypocrisy is that people like Pavita Cooper, so she might even be half white and half Indian, incredibly cosmopolitan, incredibly wealthy, successful, well-educated. I actually quite like the Indians in Britain uh, because they are just very talented people. They really do contribute economically um, 
and culturally, except when they're undermining whites. This is horrible what she's doing here. But it, it's so funny. India actually has a has a welfare kind of it kind of has a an affirmative action program for lower castes. It's trying to do things nicely for the lower castes in India and give them special privileges if they're like a, a Dalit or a Shudra or a person of low caste and instead of a Brahmin. But what happens is the people who can take advantage of these affirmative action programs in India are actually the people who already have the most education, the most literacy, the most understanding of bureaucracy because they can fill in they can fill in the government forms to claim benefits, to claim advantage, to portray themselves as a victim. And that's what this woman is doing here. Like, you've got some vaguely dark person here, you've got two Africans, but who is the woman who is most able to whine, to portray herself as a victim? I guess they have the other people in this interview, but it's the Indian. It's the person who is actually wealthier than whites. Uh, it's just so ridiculous. And it's it reminds me of that article about India, where it's not the illiterate people, the Dalits, the Shudras, the people of low caste who are just excluded from society, they can't use a government program to their advantage that's designed to help them because they don't know how to sort out the bureaucracy. They don't know how to claim things. They might not even live in a big town with all of this literacy going on. It's always the high caste people within a category that do the best out of this kind of resentment. And then, so I talked about the women. I've talked about the, yeah, and, and I noticed this earlier, like entertainment news, you have another Star Wars thing. Maybe it'll be good, probably be shit, uh, because you're going to get guaranteed views anyway, so why bother making something good? But entertainment news, you have a legitimate entertainment news story, and then you've got two stories where it's not entertainment, it's just blacks whining about racism. Uh, I clicked through on this, and he's just it's just a black on TV whining about BLM. And I don't like BLM in the USA, I think it stands for burn, loot, and murder, and I think it represents blacks who thinks they who think they shouldn't be arrested when they commit crimes. And I think every single um, case of police brutality this year that was brought up by BLM was a lie, a complete lie. Um, and you look at this. Oh, it's 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 entertainment news because someone decided to make a drama about a time the blacks complained in court about whites being racist to them. Except, you know, it, it's not just blacks. Like, this is blacks complaining. So this is first-level anti-racism, or I should say anti-white complaining, whining, racial resentment. But this is the second level, where first they complain about it, and then a few decades later, you, you make a whole drama about it. And this is the British Broadcast Broadcasting Corporation. This is the .co.uk, which stands for United Kingdom, website. It's a northwest European country. Nigeria? Like, society Nigeria. Nigeria. Why? And I noticed on Twitter that Nigeria was trending and Nigeria protests was trending. I guess we just have loads of Nigerians. And there are some Nigerians that I respect because, and I mean the, the Igbo. The Igbo launched a civil war in the 1960, in 1969 uh, to split off from Nigeria because they were more civilized, they were more middle class, they ran more of the economy. So they didn't want to be dragged down by all of these retards. And why why should we care about these shitty protests? I don't know what the SARS police unit is. I don't know what the protests are, but I guarantee I guarantee that the government of Nigeria will be will still be garbage. So I don't care about this. And the only reason it's turned up on the United Kingdom website it's because we have Nigerians here. And take a look at the, the Brixton Festival and all the petty crime that goes on every single year. Oh, so stupid. It's all so stupid. The stuff about women and relationships is insane. The stuff about female introverts talking about how introverted they are to a major news corporation is insane and just bullshit. <sighs> so yeah, it's the first time I've been on this website for years and... It's crazy. This is degenerate. 